What is going on everybody? This is Kincaid and welcome to the 1998 YZ125 build episode 3. It has been a very long time since episode 2. I've been busy riding, building other bikes, weighing on parts, but here we are ready to get the engine for the 98YZ started. As a recap, here are all the engine components that we have and here's what we've been waiting on. So we have a brand new crankshaft from ProX, really appreciate their support. We've got a brand new seal and gasket set from ProX. Millennium did a beautiful job replating the cylinder. It is fresh and ready to go. This bike's gonna be running super crisp. Got a nice Wiseco piston. Did have to bite the bullet and buy a new clutch cover just because the other one had some serious damage, but this thing looks beautiful. It's gonna look super good on the bike. And last but certainly not least, we have a brand new cylinder head from Fathead Racing, complete with push branding. This thing is gonna look epic on the bike and help with performance, so stoked on that. Thanks to Luke at Fathead Racing for supporting this build as well. Next step is to clean up these crankcases and remove and replace all the old bearings. Let's get after it. Impact screwdrivers are amazing. These are usually super easy screws to strip out because they're usually Loctited in and can be pretty difficult, but one, one hit with a good impact screwdriver. And as you can see here, no problem. They loosen right up. So as it turns out, I do not have a deep 12 millimeter socket, so I am very, very carefully clamping this in the vise. I put very little pressure. It wants to spin a little bit, so I'm gonna clamp it down just a little bit harder. This is not the ideal way to do this, but it will work. Since I don't have a deep 12, and it's really important not to damage this component of the engine, we're gonna use the solution we generally always use when a bolt is a little tighter than it should be. Heat. Didn't clamp this thing down any tighter in the vise, but the bolt, there we go. Man, when in doubt, torch it out. Absolutely perfect. Gotta be careful, this piece is gonna be hot, but now, this should pull right off. There we go. Now at this point in the process, you have two options. You can either throw the cases in the oven for about a half hour at 350 roughly, or you can go ahead and use a torch on the aluminum around the races, the bearing, and then either with a tap like this or with a socket, gently press the bearings out. Depending on the case, how old it is, how tight the fit is, usually the oven method's a little bit better but with this case and how these things have been moving, I think I won't have any issues just using the torch. All right guys, for this little bearing, I'm going to bread method it. If you are not familiar, I've shown it in a couple previous videos. I'll go ahead and link somewhere on screen. Apparently Tusk makes a blind bearing puller small enough for this size collet. I do not have it. I have a Pittsburgh blind bearing puller and haven't been motivated enough to buy another one. Honestly, bread method's kind of fun, works really well. So gonna go ahead and knock this bearing out. Alrighty, all bearings from both case halves are completely removed. I had to do this one with a blind bearing puller and my Pittsburgh set was just barely the right size. This one was almost too big, but managed to make it work and got that bearing out. So now there's nothing left to do but clean these cases up and get the new bearings installed. Now to save yourself a huge amount of effort and also be sure not to damage your new bearings when installing them, slap them in the freezer before installation. Toss them in, let them cool down. 
We'll heat up the cases. That way the aluminum expands, the bearings contract, and a lot of times you can just drop them right in. And if you can't just drop them right in, they'll pound in super easily, as opposed to if everything's at room temperature, you'll have a really difficult time and it'll be hard to get those bearings in perfectly. Now, if you have a shop sink, great. If you don't and you do not have a wife at home, you won't have a problem here. I like to wash the case halves in the sink first using Dawn dish soap. It gets a lot of the grime off. You can wash it with a sponge. It saves you a lot of time once you move to the buffer and the Dremel part where you're really polishing up the cases, but just hitting it with a sponge and some soap and warm water to start really helps get these case halves ready to go. So for my last few bike builds, I've always washed my engine cases in the sink with a sponge before moving on to the final step of polishing and final detailing before installing bearings and all that, which really got me thinking, I'm gonna run these things through the dishwasher with a load of dishes, no wipe. All right guys, the dishwasher actually did a pretty good job on the cases. Now I just need to get this old gasket material off and polish the cases up to make them look real nice and fresh. For the big spots, I'll go ahead and use the rough and then fine cleaning wheels from Prime MX. And then for the smaller areas, I will go ahead and use the Dremel with this Dremel cleaning wheel kit. I'll let these wheels speak for themselves, but if you find yourself wanting any of these, I do have a referral link. I will put that on screen and in the description. If you guys use my referral link when you make a purchase from Prime MX, it helps me out as well, so I'd really appreciate that. bad as I want to invest a couple grand in a good air compressor and a vapor blast cabinet, man, one hour with a $40 Dremel and some Prime MX cleaning wheels, and these cases are looking almost brand new. Great things about doing bike builds at home, being your own mechanic, is that nobody can tell you no drinking on the job, man. Gonna round out the night with a nice gin and tonic. And I just gotta say, if you're not putting a dash of lime in your GTs, you're doing it wrong. I think the lime is more important than the quality of the gin. There we go. All right, we've got the crank and transmission bearings installed along with these retaining clips installed. So it's time to install the crankshaft and the transmission. I put the crankshaft in the freezer to aid with installation. Hopefully it'll just drop right in. And if not, we'll grab the crank puller tool. There we have it. 
one side installed. Smooth as butter. All right, time to get the transmission installed. Gonna put a little bit of assembly lube in these bearings. Alright, so I'm going to apply a little bit of assembly lube to the right side bearings as well. And then I'm going to do a dry fit, meaning I'm going to install this right crankcase without using any sealant yet. Just because on previous bikes I've had it to where either a bearing wasn't pressed all the way in or the transmission uh, wasn't fully seated. And that makes it a little bit of an ordeal if you've already done gasket sealer and have to scrape it all and redo it again. So it can save time in the long run to just do a dry fit. There she goes. So now I'll take a rubber mallet, just kind of gingerly get this case on evenly. We've got this awesome bolt kit from Fast Metric. These just make a bike build look so much better. Brand new crankcase bolts and engine bolts all around. Just make it look that much nicer when it's all done. Transmission feels nice and smooth. Our crank does not want to spin right now, but it looks like it could just be an issue of still being not quite centered. So we're gonna do one more pull this way, and I believe that's gonna solve our problem. Maybe a quarter turn. There we go. And there we go. Smooth spinning crank. Smooth spinning transmission. Beautiful. All right, so now got to pop it back apart, apply sealant, and then this case, this bottom end will be together and ready to go. Okay, now this is where another tool comes into play, and that is the crankcase splitter. Makes this job super easy as well. It's really a simple concept. This tool bolts to the case half, and then this threads in and pushes against the crank, which obviously has nowhere to go so it forces the case half up. The case half is separating. For this, we're just using a Moto Seal fuel resistant gasket maker. I got this just at my local AutoZone. Bottom end is bolted up and ready to go. That is exciting as hell.
So this is the shaft that pulls the clutch on these bikes. It's a real funny design and there's a reason they retired it, I think. So this shaft needs to go inside this new clutch cover. But in order to do so, I need to replace this bearing and this seal. To get these off, I have to remove this tiny circlip. And my circlip pliers were not small enough, so I ordered this set of tusk ones that looked like it had the smallest tip I could find. And I still can't really fit them in this clip. I might be able to get enough to get it, but it's a complete pain. This has uh, been holding me up a little bit on getting this side of the engine complete. All right, so we did a little bit of modification to the Tusk circlip pliers on the grinder, just because this is the first time I've ever needed something this small, and I have another set of circlip pliers for pretty much every other application. So now we've got the bearing, seal, spring, and pivot all back installed on this arm so we can install this into the clutch cover and get it put onto the engine. And to make my life a little bit easier because obviously this is a little bit tricky, I have to get the bearing sitting here and then the seal sitting here all while pressing the shaft in. So I'm gonna go ahead and freeze the entire shaft and then I'll heat the cover up a little bit so that hopefully that bearing installation goes a little more smoothly without damaging anything. All right, well, we're waiting for that bearing to get cold so we can install it. We're gonna get this cleaned up and we're gonna dye it black using RIT dye more. I learned about this technique from Cameron Niemela. So he has a full video on this technique, but essentially I'm just gonna boil water with this dye in it and then let this soak in there and it's gonna dye the cover black. It looks really, really nice. I think it looks a lot better than this gray plastic, especially with the way this bike's gonna be done. All right, the 98 YZ125 engine is finally complete. Thanks to the help of Pro X for gaskets, seals, and the piston. Thanks to Luke at Fathead Racing for this awesome etched custom cylinder head that's gonna be absolutely badass on the bike. And thanks to Prime MX for the best cleaning and polishing product around to help make this 23-year-old engine look almost brand new. I ran into a lot of hiccups on this engine with missing parts, broken parts, things breaking while I was working on it, but I'm really happy that it is finally all put together and ready to go. Next steps will be finally getting the chassis cleaned up, painted, and starting to reassemble, but having the power plant sitting here ready to go is extra motivation. So it has been a lot of months since episode two of this YZ125 build. It has been a crazy and fun summer, been super busy riding and enjoying time with my friends. And honestly, just haven't made the time for this build that I thought I was going to. The winter are approaching, the day's getting a little shorter, it's easier to motivate and get to work on these bikes. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this YZ125 engine come together. I'll continue working on the bike and I promise episode four will come sooner than episode three did. With that said, I would like to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like rating and a comment down below. If you're new to the channel and have not already, I would also appreciate if you could subscribe for more content. Have this YZ125 build going, along with an RM125 build coming this winter that I am very excited about. All right, guys, talk to you next time.